All right, so where we left off, we are having a situation here where we're trying to pull all of the users into this uh, drop-down box here. But we're not getting the user data because we're not sending the proper value to the data user function. We are actually sending the ID number where this data user function wants the email address. Now we could actually just go ahead and change this instead of ID just use email address. So let's do that just to see this in action. So instead of ID we'll select email and then we need to change this to email down here. Save that and go ahead and reload the page. Look at our drop down. There you go. We've got the proper names here. So in order to complete this, we need to go ahead and put the uh, value in here as well. So we'll go ahead and create an echo. And we're going to want the ID number to be sent back because that's how it gets stored in the page table, is by ID number, not the email address. So we'll do PHP tags, echo, user underscore data. We need to send it the ID. Go ahead and close that. Close your PHP tags. So we'll go ahead and save this. Now, this is going to work as far as uh, having the correct value and sending that back. However, we're not doing anything in the database yet. So we need to add this to our list here. So let's go ahead and before title, put in user for the user column. And then over here in the values, before title, we need to do underscore post. User, comma. Now this is a, a number or an integer, so we don't need to put this in single quotes. So we can save this, and now this is going to send everything to the database the way we need it. So let's go ahead and test that. So re reload the page here. So we'll go ahead and select uh, John Rainey here from LiveSpeak Radio. And uh, some dummy data here. save. There you go. Page was added. Let's go ahead and test that. Go over to PHP My Admin. Click on Browse. There you go. Test the user and user ID 3 got put in there which is John Rainey. So that works out great. Now what I talked about in the last video is instead of setting up this uh, data user function to only accept the email address as the ID that we check against to get the data. Let's go ahead and give it some options. So if we go back to data.php. We're using the email address because that's how we're logging in. However, let's give it the option to take the email address or the ID. So one way to detect that is that these two different values are two different data types. ID is an integer whereas the email address is a string. So that makes this really easy to uh, decipher. So let's go ahead and do an if statement here. Let's give ourselves some space. So if we do ID, but we're going to wrap this in a function. We're going to call it is underscore numeric. Make sure you have the uh, correct amount of parentheses here. So we're going to check if ID is numeric, then we're going to do something. So do our curly brackets. And what we could do, so let's go ahead and grab this query here. Cut that out and paste it inside here. And 
and we're going to change the where clause from email to ID. So if it's numeric, it's going to be looking for a numeric value, which is going to be the ID number instead of the email. And we can do else, paste again, and we've got the original one with the email address. So Q is only going to equal the appropriate query here. So we save that, and let's hop back over to index, and let's uh, make this run the way we had it before. So instead of email, let's choose ID here on line 123, and over here, and over here in the data user function, let's make sure we're using the ID key. Let's go ahead and save this. And if this works correctly, we should be able to reload the page and still get a list of names, sure enough. So that's pretty cool. That gives us some versatility with this data underscore user function. And we're actually going to use that concept uh, quite a bit here throughout the rest of the videos. But I do want to show you one other thing, and that's to kind of uh, kill redundancies in our code. Rather than define the entire query more than once, Let's go ahead and we'll just take one of these, copy this, and paste it here, put it back where it was. And instead of Q, let's go ahead and create a variable that we'll call condition, or just C-O-N-D for short. And we'll go ahead and take the whole select part out, and then we'll do the same down here. So. CO and D for condition. Take out the select. And then we need to do the same down here in the uh, query. We need to take out the condition part of it. And after users, select all from users in space, and we'll just stick in CO and D. Now, we could have actually killed the redundancies even more by taking out where and simply placing that down here. But the reason I did it this way is that in case for some reason this if statement doesn't run at all, um, this uh, query will still run without error. Now odds of that happening are pretty slim. In fact it probably wouldn't happen unless we sent a value that was not numeric nor a string. But I wanted to show you why I did that. So we'll go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and just test it. So we'll reload the page and see if our list still works. Sure enough, pretty cool.